Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja and in this segment today we are going to discuss about how central government is launching a mission mode project for the next 1.5 years to recruit 10 lakh people in the central and state government services. This topic is of extreme significance from the perspective of prelims examination as well as from the perspective of mains examination. So let's begin with the topics that we are going to discuss under this. These are the many topics. GS mains paper second and third are your main concerns over here. Let's move on and talk about the situation. Now there is a grim situation when it comes to vacancies in the government uh, sectors and that is why a mission mode project has been launched by the Prime Minister to make sure that 10 lakh, approximately 10 lakh people are recruited in the next 1.5 years. And of course, we know as Indians, as middle class Indians, they are always fascinated with government services. Why are we so obsessed with government services? First, because of the reputation and the financial security that is related to it. You must have heard, okay, once you get a government job, it's all settled. You don't need to worry about financial security because it's very hard to get terminated in government services whereas in private sector you have to ensure that you are very active enthusiastic and very uh, you you can see competent when it comes to other people who are working with you in the private sector so financial stability is one thing and reputation okay this tag of being a government servant is such that has captured and enchanted us indians since a long period of time and colonial hangover has something to do with this so still right now we are under this impression that once we get a government job it's all settled and the indian education system has been crafted in such a manner that it caters to the needs of government services second is that and there are also poor labor laws which are actually causing not the formal sector but the informal sector i'm talking about which is much more larger much more larger when we compare it to the formal services so that is also a point that because of poor labor laws private sector is not considered as safe as the government services now these are being reformed of course so what are the recent or you can say government initiatives in the last few decades with respect to making more people come in the government sectors now you also have a homework here you have to tell me in the comment segment which the chronology basically suppose this is one two three four five and six you have to tell me the chronology with respect to which scheme was launched the first and then following order so mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee scheme which gives 100 days of people in the rural areas who are wish to who are wishing to do work one person per household and this is actually reiterating the right to work ideology so this is for rural areas to create productive uh, assets in the rural areas through employment for 100 days pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana which has to do with upskilling and upgradation of the youth. Garib Kalyan Rozgar Abhyan, Atmanirbhar Bharat Rozgar Abhyan, Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay, Grameen Kaushal Yojana, Deen Dayal Antyodaya Yojana, National Urban Livelihood Mission. So whoever is going to answer this question correctly, I am going to take your name in the next segment. I will take the names of those who have answered my previous question correctly. Okay. So let's also talk about the what is the status of the vacancies in our quality right now first as on march whatever i am telling you over here has been answered by the respective ministries in the uh, parliament so nothing to be scared of and you don't have to remember the data that i am giving this is just to show you the magnet what is the you can say magnitude of vacancies okay so as on march 2020 as many as 8,72,000 positions were vacant in the central government and group a services it's 21,255 this is the creamy layer of the services, IAS, IFS, IPSR comprised here. Group B services, 94,842. Group C, more in Group C, 7 lakh plus. Now in IAS, the reputed IAS for which all of you must be preparing, 1,515 posts are vacant as on January 2021. And 6,558 and 15,227 teaching as well as non-teaching posts are also vacant. Because people uh, specifically in the teaching and non-teaching background here, they tend to uh, rush their superannuation. And that is why a lot of vacancies are accumulating in this segment. Moving on, if we talk about others, 7,476 posts of officers, which includes AMC, ADC, MN, MNS, and 97,177 
posts of jcos and ors are also lying vacant nothing to remember just get the magnitude of the vacancy now the corresponding numbers for air forces and navy is also given over here 621 and 4850 respectively and many uh, people when rajnath singh gets on a tour the ministry of defense the minister of defense sena bharti chalu karwao is one of the slogans that has been invoked since a long period of time so the agnipath scheme has been brought to the fore which is being of course protested any reform in this country cannot survive if mindless protests are going to happen government is there to take care of the citizens parliament is there to make sure that any legislation uh, which is irrational or has been passed without any sort of deliberation it should be checked the judiciary is there to take care of the constitution so make sure that you are well informed first and then you have any sorts of opinion about anything so agnipath scheme is a really good scheme and it has been brought into the uh, culture in order to ensure that youthful people are recruited in the army so 17.5 to 21 years of age of students or aspirants who are looking forward for a good career opportunity in the army and uh, in the indian armed forces they can apply for the scheme this is for the uh, segment of the armed forces so the scheme is also relevant over here now who are our main recruiting bodies the first one is your very important upsc union public service commission and staff selection commission if we talk about upsc group a and group b recruitments are its forte now the staff selection commission it recruits for all group b the non gazetted and group c non technical posts in the central ministries and the subordinate and attached office to it of course there are certain exemptions we will not go into that the upsc had advertised 27764 posts and recruited 24836 people in the last 5 years everything is what the ministries have said the ssc advertised 1 lakh plus posts recruiting 1 lakh 74744 people upsc's latest available data in the annual report of 2021 has said that they have conducted 14 examinations which were held for civil services posts and defense services in 2020 21 and 25 lakh candidates applied of which 17 uh, sorry 11.38 lakh appeared and only 3986 were recommended for selection so it's a rigorous process now 21 22 upsc recommended 4699 candidates as per the response given to the lok sabha by the minister okay moving on that was from april 2022 okay and the staff selection commission conducted 12 all india open competitive examination look at the magnitude one crore candidates applied for the different stages so you can see what is the craze and frenzy is, is there with respect to these examination combined higher secondary level examination 2019 the largest examination 41 lakh candidates across the country applied for it and in all the ssc recommended 68000 candidates in 2021 and 2022 recruitments fell just to 29,653. So, this is the trend that we were analyzing. Moving on, if we talk about the current strength, the current employment of the government of India is 34 lakh approximately, and that is on March 1st, 2022. The Indian railways are the biggest government employer. Keep that in mind. This is a prelims fact. And 12.52 lakh employees are there as of March 1, 2020. Also, estimated strength of 12. 03 lakh and 12.01 lakh as on march 1 2021 2022 respectively no need to remember anything just an idea five ministries are the biggest employers and departments railways which have almost 40 percent then home affairs 30 percent defense and civil 12 percent department of post 5.50 percent and department of revenue so you can remember the chronology of highest to lowest or lowest to highest whatever suits you okay when i talk about government services no government in the world can have that amount of resources that it can give job to everybody who wishes for a government job first of all this is this is a fact supply and demand gap that is why the competition is so high resources are scarce demand is a lot so first we have to have a flawless mode of examination and recruitment which is free of paper leaking free of any sort of fraudulence free of any sort of 
hacking so in online mode also you have you must have seen national testing agency conducted the examination of Allahabad High Court if you are not aware I will make you aware and that was into a lot of controversy because it was alleged by certain students of a center that uh, the, uh, the system of a person was working on its own and that caused a lot of fracas people did not give this examination after that and it's still entangled in controversy so first that secondly if we talk about many other things like many other uh, instances of papers getting leaked and everything these are something that is a big blot on our country with respect to examination salaries and pension how to create a proper revenue for the government so that it can provide salaries for so many government employees and pensions afterwards that is also a challenge another thing how to balance between salaries and pensions at the social welfare scheme that our country a mixed economy wants to do also if i will ensure that each and every government employee has proper salary in hand of course they will be demanding goods as their standard of living will rise so that will create inflation if supply is not matched with the demand manpower management with respect to recruitment is a big task humongous task and after that recruiting so many people how to manage that manpower is also a task reservation policy as long as government exams are there reservation is going to be there so if we are talking about new examinations to come to the fore more reservation demands will also be there that are currently existing but from other communities as well because aggregating distress is a lot in our country private sector might not be able to create as many jobs as we want so reservation is something that is going to become a challenge then what is the way forward first fair and secure mode of examination systems should be made in such a manner the online system as well as the offline that no leakage hacking or anything of sorts can happen another thing revenue system should be strengthened taxation should be progressive taxation should be comprehensive in such a manner that revenue generation is there and we do not have to choose between salary for human resources and pension for human resources after they retire and also the uh, social welfare schemes right supply chain resilience as i said inflation will rise if the demand goes high supply should also be ensured that it matches the demand for that we need investment and for that we need private sector so we have to encourage private sectors not only to uh, create jobs for skilled and unskilled both but also make sure that labor laws are there not for only casual work uh, formal workers but informal workers as well we have to ensure that our country does not only rely on the government for jobs so they have to ensure that we as the citizens as youthful country as a young country are able to have our own startups for which many myriad schemes have been launched by the government with respect to startups aggregating reform and allied activities should also be encouraged in such a manner that people again make sure we have uh, proper resources to invest in agriculture for that a lot of agricultural activities uh, which are not as productive but many people are dependent on uh, approximately 60 to 70 percent of the population of india is dependent on agriculture but productivity is not a lot so not only agriculture which is seasonal in nature should be strengthened but also the allied activities which are related to it okay so let's uh, first of all look at our question for mains examination then i will take the names of those who have answered my question correctly it's a long list critically analyze the challenges associated with excessive dependence on government jobs in india also suggest remedies to the issue okay so you have to write it in 250 words just bear with me a moment so that i can take the names of those who have answered yesterday's question correctly all right i got many uh, answers which were correct in nature so uh, those of you have not answered the question can move on not an issue okay so let's begin i'll go from the last one okay so abhishek gurjar has answered it correctly only the second statement was correct uh, with respect to the governor the second statement was correct and aruna has answered it correctly abhishek yashaswini then mehul has answered it correctly jia if i am skipping your name that means i do not i am unable to pronounce your name okay gajanan has answered it correctly adesh has answered it correctly kalpana has answered it correctly abhay and uh, pooja singh has answered it correctly shri reshma has answered it correctly then 
uh, again mm, i think danny you have written two that's the second option only two was correct raghav has answered it correctly anjali answered it correctly mini has answered it correctly akshit singh has answered it correctly abhishek has answered it correctly migrendra sorry if i did not pronounce that correctly puneet has answered it correctly puneet has been an ardent viewer i i can see thank you so much kanchan has answered it correctly bidhan has answered it correctly uh, tanmay has answered it correctly then abhishek has answered it correctly swati also answered correctly thank you so much himanshu has answered it correctly then uh, poonam umesh ankush arvind many of you have answered it correctly thank you so much for answering try to answer as quick as possible so the next segment can have your name okay so that's it for today tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment until then stay updated and thank you so much for watching